Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neeson. We have a great guest today on Tour Life Ministries, Kenny Russell. Uh, Kenny, say hello to the Tour Life audience. Hi, how are you all doing? Thanks for having me on the show today. Uh, now, Kenny, uh, from uh, your accent, we could tell you're uh, not from the United States. Uh, and uh, yeah. it's quite interesting where you currently live now and where you're from. So tell people where you live now and where you're originally from. Right, well, I live in the Galilee in Israel, in northern Israel, and I'm from Scotland. And uh, how long have you been in Israel? We've been there since June 2011, and uh, what an amazing part of the world to be in, I tell you. Amazing. Great. Well, okay. we'll get into in a little while uh, ex actually uh, what you're doing in Israel, but uh, you have an amazing story, and you're currently now a Hebraic Roots teacher, and you yeah. teach the Bible like you've done for a long time. So give everybody uh, uh, your background of uh, how long have you been uh, into studying the Bible, and then uh, we want to talk about your more recent conversion to uh, studying it in a different way. Amen. Well, I had a radical encounter with uh, the Ruach when I was 11 years old. Uh, it was a supernatural moment. When I was nine years old, I was a Scottish version of Huckleberry Finn, running away from home, uh, just stealing, being involved in crime, pretty much demon-possessed. And at 11, my whole world was transformed when I met the living creator of the universe, God, as I called him at that time. And, um, you know, my parents dropped me off at a Christian holiday camp, you know, as a demon-possessed maniac and just praying, God, you got to save this kid. And I came back like John the Baptist, you know, just totally radically changed. So that was the start of my journey. My parents were Baptist ministers. And, um, you know, I, I got filled with the Spirit. And, you know, I remember one old lady saying, in the church, you know, half deaf, not knowing that anyone could hear. I think we over prayed for that Kenny Russell, you know. <laughs> He's just like too saved, you know. And then I'll never forget meeting the woman as she was coming down the hall at the back of the, my dad's church with a big finger pointing at me saying, you're not a Baptist, you're a Pentecostal. And I was, I was thinking, when I thought she was going to insult me, is that not like a good thing? Or uh, what is a Pentecostal? I didn't know what these, what these words were or terminologies. And she says, they're down in the hut over the other side of the, the town, you know, not in the nice Baptist church. They're in the hut, the second class Christians of the Pentecostals. So, you know, I go down there and find these people, thus saith the Lord and signs, wonders, miracles. I'm like, these are my people. And, you know, I was passionate for the gospel. I was out there seeking to bring the truth and transformation of who Yehovah was. And, you know, I got beat up and barred and spat on for the gospel. But I was just hungry for him. Then at 15, Paul, I ran away from the Father, not because I didn't love him, because I couldn't find examples of people who genuinely lived this life. Where are the people that believe this book? And um, at 15, you know, I'm like, maybe I'm schizophrenic. Am I really hearing from heaven? Is this really the voice of the Ruach speaking to me? And I said, Father, reveal yourself to me and I, that, that I may know your truth and I'll serve you all the days of my life. And I said, Devil, I serve you notice. If I find the living reality of Yehovah, I will come after you to the nations of the world and you'll wish you never mess with me. And um I walked off that pitch, my businesses and the music industry, everything was blessed. I didn't have any more battles, any trouble. Then at 17 years old, I was in a pub just drinking the whole day. I was near enough an alcoholic at 17, not because of depression, just free booze, cigarettes and the music industry. And I'm plastered out my box, as we call it in Scotland. And um, I get sobered up in a second at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night boozing. And I heard this voice saying, look around, they're all hurting and crying out, saying, please, somebody help me. And he, the, the voice said, it's time for you to come home. And I knew it was the voice of the Spirit. I walked out of that pub at 17, and from that day to this day, I have never been the same. And my desire has always been to follow and walk in the ways of the Spirit. And I've been a missionary, I've traveled, you know, ministered the gospel on the streets, drug rehab and music and it's been an incredible journey, Paul. Incredible journey. Well, uh, that is an amazing story, and uh, you know, it's just so great to hear testimonials like that. But tell us now. Uh, so, your parents being Baptist uh, ministers, and you uh, just seeing the gospel being preached by Pentecostals and Baptists, and living the Christian life for so long, and you know, and studying the Word, and teaching the Word, and preaching the Word. More recently, you discovered the that 
there was something you didn't discover recently, uh, the Hebraic roots kind of say. Right. So tell us a little about how that happened and, and how the impact that had on you and your friends and family. Well, here, here I was in the streets of London. You know, I'm, I'm 19 years old. I'm ministering. I'm serving them. And I get this word. And this word is from the Spirit. He says, get up, go to the south of Spain. I'm going to uh, introduce you to your wife. And she's going to be in a place called Mijas. He told me the location. There's a fellowship there. They're going to be meeting in a restaurant. Go there. You'll meet your wife. So I jumped on the plane, flew, flew down there from London and um, you know I knew the voice of the spirit I knew what it was like to fall in his ways and I get to this place climb up the hill on the, on the Malaga coast and I get to this restaurant and that's where I met my wife and here she was Jewish and uh, it was an incredible encounter you know I share this on YouTube and on bulldozerfaith.com people can see the whole testimony but we want to really go on at the things that happened but this was the, the start where I started to realize the importance of Israel and when we got married, you know, I said, you know, one day I promise I will bring you back to the land of Israel because I was told we were Gentiles, that we had to take the Jews on their shoulders and get back to Israel. But because we've lived 22 years as uh, servants of the most high, our whole desire is to make sure everything we do is about his kingdom. Everywhere the Father has sent us, be it Spain, the UK, America or here in Israel, we always have the attitude, Father, what are you doing in these places and how do we become a part of what you're doing? We don't want to take our agenda and just do our thing in another, in another location. And we had two years fasting and praying in the, in the UK before we got to Israel. Father, what is the call? Where do you need to send us at this time? And then in uh, February 2011, or June, yeah, February 2011, the Father said, I've called you to Israel. The hour has come, go to Israel. We get to Israel with just bags, nowhere to stay. We don't even know what's going to happen. The Father has blessed us, looked after us there in the land. But what happened is I started to walk the land. Our family walked the land. We prayed in the land. And we asked the Father, reveal your purposes to us. And then he started to open up the scripture to us and show us how disconnected we were to the feasts and to the Sabbath and just who he was and our whole world started to change. And he gave me this one word that literally changed my life. He said, the land deal is not for the millennial kingdom. It is for today. And when that word started to sink in, my whole viewpoint of scripture changed and my identity changed. I went from being a Gentile Christian to understanding that I truly was grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel. And the only way this could work is if I actually became Israel. I would have to be Israel. As I started to look at the Aliyah scriptures, we made Aliyah, and I realized, you know, there's all these scriptures about Aliyah, and, and the Jews say these are all their scriptures. Then I saw that in the same passages, I would have Judah and Israel together as one, and I realized there was a difference and a separation. And, you know, I'm like, I've, I've ministered in, in Israeli conferences and things over the years as a, a keynote speaker and everything. And here I am coming to the place where I'm discovering anew a whole message. I never realized who my identity was. And it literally changed my world. And I'd never heard of a Hebrew roots teacher either. So I'm coming into the Hebraic roots of the faith by the Spirit as I'm walking the land. And... Um, it is amazing, Paul. My whole world is supernaturally transformed. I see Yeshua in the feasts. I see him in Torah. And um, we have a Hebrew root center there in the Galilee now. We also have launched the Hebrew Lesson Challenge. And everything we are doing in the land is about making an impact. And how do we bless the land? But also, how do we bring people to the realization of who they are called to be? Well, and, he, uh, wow. Here, here's my question for you, Kenny, is... You've been a believer for a very long time, yeah. and in that time, uh, you knew you were preaching the gospel. But were you actually reading the Bible those many years as well? Oh, I, I was. I was absolutely in the Word every day. Okay. I spent hours in the okay. Word. Okay. So you know. here's my question: By reading the Word so much, uh, and I access to a lot of people, not just yourself, is how did you miss it for so long? You know, I don't. I, sometimes I look back. You know, I said to the Father, how could you not have told me this 20 years ago? I would have changed. I don't care if it would have been persecution and attack against me. Why couldn't I see this message? 
you know, why, why couldn't I get it? And then he just took me to Romans 11. He said, this is the time for the blindfold to come off the eyes of Israel. And he said, this is the day of this revelation. It wasn't time for you to know. And sometimes I've shared with people about the Hebraic roots, and they're like, if I take this word that you are saying to me, then that means my entire ministry is in vain. Can I look back at 25 years of ministry and say it counted for nothing? Because I knew I had the guaranteed seal of the Spirit, and I don't believe it counted for nothing. I truly was saved, but I didn't understand the true gospel of the kingdom. But the, the spirit, the Ruach, he reassured me. He said, this is the hour. This is the time. I am revealing this uh, to you right now for such a time as this. And it literally was like being born again again. It was just such a supernatural transformation. Wow. You know, it's amazing how many uh, people I interview that have a, a, a Bible background. They've read it many times, and they give me the same answer that you gave me, is that finally the, the blinds were lifted from their eyes. And you would think that this people, this person just doesn't read their Bible, but they do, and they just haven't yeah. seen it. It's amazing. Uh, tell me, Ken, uh, so when you started to uh, live a more biblical lifestyle in the original and the renewed covenant, how did your, your family, uh, your parents being uh, Baptist uh, ministers and, and just other people that you knew in the church, when they started to hear about you keeping the Sabbath and celebrating the feast, uh, what was their response to you? Well, we got hit with all of the, you know, the, the the normal Christian responses of, you know, the 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 Torah, the law is nailed to the cross. You know, we're under the new covenant, not the old covenant. You know, all of this stuff. People, you know, didn't understand. But you know, you have to realize there's, there's a process for us getting to this place. You know, uh, in 2009, we we got rid of Christmas. The Father said, "Get paganism out of your." walk with Yeshua. So there was a whole journey that was taking place. It wasn't just we came into the Hebraic roots and now we're, we dump Christmas. We didn't do Easter. We did Passover. So we fought because, you know, we just wanted to do some Jewish things within our home, but we didn't really understand unleavened bread and things. So people, you know, we have always been out there on the edge anyway uh, with our ministry as we minister on the life of the kingdom and the and the spirit. We were never into the Kindalini, the false anointings. We never compromised our prophetic gifts and calling. In fact, you know, I was called to the lion prophet and deceptive leader. So we're always coming against those systems that said the prophet is like a fortune teller. We'd be like, no, it's, you know, it, the prophet is not the alternative to the fortune teller. So we've always had the ability to communicate and teach. So our family right now are watching us. Do they all understand right now? They don't. But you know what? We will live the life. We will be that example. And every day we are seeing people coming into Hebraic roots of the faith. We're seeing pastors who are theology, uh, uh, doctors of theology like myself. You know, within three hours I can break down their systems and show them why we have been lied to. Um, and, you know, and on the streets, within seven minutes I can see people come alive. I need to have what you are talking about and, um, you know, we're filming testimonies here in the land of America on this Planting Seeds of Light tour I'm doing right now, and we're seeing transformation. So the biggest key for us seeing transformation in our family, my wife and daughter, obviously, we were on this journey together, but they would watch me on TV. You know, after I come into Hebraic Roots, I'd be on Shabbat Night Live, and I'm traveling. They're like, why are you wearing tzitzis? And Haley's parents are Jewish, and they're like, why is he wearing tzitzis? Has he gone back to Judaism, gone back to the law? You know, all this stuff would be coming up, and um, it was amazing. You know, like, how did I come into eating kosher? You know, I'm standing in New York, the airport, I buy a turkey sandwich, and it's got bacon in it. And I'm looking at this sandwich, and, and it's, the spirit says, oh, you don't eat that anymore, <laughs> you know? Uh, as yeah. I'm coming to share a message with America, and all of a sudden I'm realizing I go to the scriptures, something like a sheet is coming down before them. It's not a real sheet. It's something like a sheet. It's a vision. What is the word that is coming to Peter? That don't say that any man is unclean. I've said clean. It was nothing to do with the food laws being done away with. I was supernaturally transformed as I was coming into this walk. My family has been coming in this journey with us. And together we can minister and make a difference. It's well, amazing. Well, Kenny, that is so great that, that this has happened to you. Now, uh, how do you approach uh, 
Christians that, that are still blinded. How do you approach, let's say a good friend of yours is a Christian, uh, you've known them for many years, and let's say uh, you're at their house, let's say, because you're traveling around the United States now, and um, you, 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 you're connected to yeah. many countries. You're from Ireland, you live in Israel, you're traveling around the United States. Scotland. So, yeah. Scotland. so let's say uh, you're staying in somebody's house, and let's say it's Christmas time, and they have a Christmas tree in a house. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, I talk about why do we do the things that we do? You know, do we truly understand the reasons why we do these things? You know, even before I came into Hebraic Roots, the Father said, get these things out of my face, you know? Uh, what is it about paganism and their experience? I explain to people, you know, do you call yourself a Protestant or non-denomination, but you're just Catholic? I go to Israel and, and you say you're, you know, you're Pentecostal or whatever, or non-denominational, and the Is Israelis just look you in the face and go, you're Catholic. And you're like offended. What are you talking about? And I said, it really hit home being in Israel and having the understanding of Catholicism. A Protestant is a Protestant Catholic, but we haven't dealt with all these things that Catholicism has baptized and said, this is how we do things now. So I explained to them the importance of the breakdown. I said, you know, many people have heard it's all fulfilled in Jesus. He's fulfilled it all. We're under the new covenant. So I take them in Matthew chapter 5 and say, let's talk about this. What does this look like? And then, you know, uh, it's all fulfilled in Yeshua. He says, not one jot or tittle will be taken away until all things are fulfilled, until heaven and earth pass away. And I say, the only way we can say all things are fulfilled is if we are a good Catholic. Because the Pope is the vicar of Christ reigning in the millennial kingdom yeah but kenny here but kenny if if somebody would have if, if you would have been one with the christmas tree and somebody would have been sitting in your house let's say you would have invited yeah. me there and i would have gave you this big speech you would have told me you, you know since the blinds had not been lifting from your eyes you would have called me a legalist and you would have told me i was wrong and you would have tried to teach me right so 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 knowing that then experience and knowing that that's how you would have been how, what, what exactly do you say? You, of course, you can give somebody the scriptures right. and point it out to them, but, but, we, but how we do you break treat it, them is what we I'm saying. Break it, we break it down. We say, what did Yeshua come to do? Did he come to give us a new religion? If he says, I and the Father are one, why do we have all these things added? The first commandment has, you know, love the Lord thy God and serve him only. Why are we serving him through all these different things? And I relate back to the golden calf. And, you know, they say this is all legalistic. But then when I say if it's all legalistic, then Yeshua must have been the legalist. Why, why did he come and bring forth the freedom of life, the deliverance, salvation? What does it mean? It means to be delivered from our enemies. How do we become delivered? Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. So as I show them the relationship that they have with Catholicism, in their ways and in their walk, and then bring them back to the Hebraic roots of the faith. Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 3, all righteousness is fulfilled in his baptism, in his mikvah. But then in Matthew chapter 5, he says, if your righteousness doesn't uh, supersede that of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are not worthy of his kingdom. And as I say to them, Yeshua came against the Pharisees and Sadducees and religion and all the things that were added to the Torah. But he came to fulfill Torah, to bring it to its fullness. He came to do Torah and to show us the way in which we were called to walk. He didn't come to do away with these things. If he broke Torah, he is not the Messiah. And he said that we are called to do what he did. And I see so many people transformed and given up Christmas and throwing Christmas trees on the fire and coming to the realization of who the Father truly is. That, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And all this information, you're sharing a lot of information now, but all of this can be yeah. found, including your lecture schedule. You're currently on tour in the United States. All yeah. this can be found in your website, Kenny, right? Yeah, it's on bulldozerfaith.com. You can go under the events and find out we're updating where we're going. You know, we're on a prophetic mandate. You know, sometimes we're just traveling out there. You know, you don't know where I'll show up tomorrow. You know, the uh -huh. Father changes my schedule. He says, go here, go there, don't go here, don't go there. And it's amazing what is happening. But literally, I'm telling you, you know, I'm seeing pastors keep keeping Shabbat. They're, what are they going to do with their congregations now? I just interviewed a pastor here in Sarasota today. And he just talked about, he came into the revelation the following week. He takes his, his whole assembly to the Shabbat from the Sunday. Uh, are we about to see mega churches being transformed because their leaders are coming to the realization of who Yeshua truly is? 
Get oh, ready, okay. America. The, well, the fields are ripe on the harvest. I'm ready for what the well, Father has today. We're excited. And in, in, in the scriptures in Matthew, it says, um, I'll pray that there will be uh, many workers because uh, there's, there's a lot of a yes. lot of a lot of people to reach, and I'm glad you're out there doing this. And uh, again, everybody, uh, Kenny's uh, website is below the video in the description, and it's Bulldozer of Faith. Is that is it? No, so bulldozerfaith.com. <laughs> okay, bulldozerfaith.com. It's below the video. Uh, Kenny, you're traveling around the United States for a couple of months now, and then you're going back to Israel. And, right. And you said you have TV shows and so on, and everyone can get that information from your website, right? Yeah, we have our feeds go out at Shabbat. We're also on television in Europe. We start this Shabbat, 10 o'clock at night in the UK with our services. So we have a lot on YouTube, a lot on our, our website. You can search for Bulldozer of Faith on YouTube. And we're just we've recorded over 100 testimonies that are about to go on YouTube of people coming into the Hebraic Roots of the Faith. So I hope these tools can bless you as we share. You know, we are not just some little minority just to be ignored. You know, this is time for supernatural transformation. The fields are ripe here in America, and it's time to pull down these strongholds and see families and communities supernaturally changed. This is the hour. Let's rise up and not say four months more than now the harvest. The harvest is ripe right now. What are you doing? Just see what I'm doing. I want to stir people up to get out there. Let's not just do our... our um, or the, or Torah studies and just understand what the 46 hair of the armpit of the Antichrist is all about with the breaking down of the Hebrew descriptions of it. But let's find the life of the Spirit and get this message out there and bring transformation to this generation. Wonderful, Kenny. Wonderful. Great message, brother. Great website. Uh, and uh, I'm glad your eyes were opened up. And I'm glad you're, you're, you're on fire to open other people's eyes. That's just wonderful. Before we uh, leave, I know you said a lot and you say some good parting words, but is there anything else you'd like to say before we end? Well, I'd like to say, you know, like, like, like I said, this is the hour. You know, many people are afraid of the life of the Spirit. They're afraid to speak out. Do we know how to truly witness? How do we take this message out? Are we being uh, disciples? Are we truly getting out there and making a difference? We are commissioned to go and make disciples. This is not the just say the prayer after me gospel. This is to go and make disciples and to bring people back to the truth. I'm going to, I'm in Florida right now. I'm heading up to uh, Central America, then over to the West Coast and back across to the East Coast. So check out where we're at. Come and join with us on this trip. And also, you know, any way we can help you, we want to be there to stand with you so you can make a difference in your family life and in your community. Now, what about Scotland, where you're from? Uh... Scotland, well, we are just starting our approach in the UK. We go on television. We've got prime time on Shabbat, Friday night, 10 o'clock to 11. In Scotland. And we're going to st in, in Scotland and okay. in England and Ireland and Wales. And we're going to go in there every month to minister. We've got home fellowship starting right now. We, it's time. We've got pastors calling me saying they are keeping Shabbat in Scotland. Wonderful. This is the hour. That's great. Kenny, thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule. I want everyone to get to his website in the description below the video here. Until then, uh, Kenny and everyone else, uh, sh shalom, shalom. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson, your health watchman. Thank you for checking out my channel. If you'd like more Bible-related videos, you can click right here now to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can get a whole bunch of great videos on these topics. If you want to check out my website, oralifeministries.org, where I have so many different videos, you can click right here right now, and it'll take you to that website as well. Until then, everybody, have a great day, and shalom, shalom.